Oh my god, this test tomorrow is going to be so hard. I have no idea what's going on with mitochondria. I wish I had a genie that could give me all the answers. Oh wait! My grandmother once told me something about a magic lamp. Oh Susie, this lamp right here is magical! If you ever need help, just rub it a little and all your dreams will come true. Oh, that's oh, that's okay. Here you go! My test tomorrow. Where is that damn lamp? <laughs> oh genie! <laughs> Hello, little Susie. I'm Jasmine the Genie, and I'm here to help you study. How did you know that is what I needed? I know everything. How would you like to take a trip into the mitochondria? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's start with the basics. These are the different parts of the mitochondria. Also remember, Susie, the mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle that is in an aqueous environment. But why is the mitochondria so important, Genie? Well, Susie, it's the most successful in creating the most abundant ATP, and it also lets off carbon dioxide. Well, how does it create so much ATP? Well, why don't we travel into the inner membrane space in order to take a closer look so I can teach you better. Okay. The process begins with pyruvate, formed from glycolysis, enters the inner matrix from the cytoplasm. Oh yeah, I remember this. Isn't this the Krebs cycle? Yes, Susie, exactly. During the Krebs cycle, pyruvate circles around the inner matrix and lets off byproduct, ATP, and CO2. Susie, do you know what the product of the Krebs cycles are? Yes, the highly reduced molecules NADH and FADH2. And because they are highly reduced, they donate electrons to the nearby cytochrome. The cytochromes form a chain-like structure in the inner membrane and pass these newly gained electrons down the chain. When the cytochrome gets the electron, they become excited and thus they pump protons from the inner matrix into the inner intermembrane space through active transport. Great job, Susie. You're getting it. Do you know what happens next? Um, no. Okay, let me explain. Next is the formation of the chemiosmotic gradient. This begins when the intermembrane reaches a pH of 5 and the inner matrix reaches a pH of 7. The ATP synthase is now activated and it forms a channel which allows the already built up protons to pass through the channel, moving back into the intermatrix. Through passive transport, right? Yes, exactly. When the protons exit the ATP synthase, they move with a great deal of energy with phos which phosphorylates ADP and P into ATP. Wow, that is amazing! I love ATP! It is so helpful in my body! <laughs> wow, Jeannie, you really know your stuff. Thanks to you, I'm gonna ace ham bones test tomorrow. Don't thank me, thank your grandmother. Thanks, Grandma. Welcome, Susie, I love you!